treasure chest. There's no feeling more satisfying in a Zelda game than popping open one of these suckers. But what happens when you can't reach one of them? Not because you lack the skills or items needed, but because it's impossible to reach. Believe it or not, these chests do exist in Breath of the Wild, and they've been torturing completionists for nearly four years. It all started back when the game first came out. In-game, you can use a thing called a Sheikah sensor to detect monsters, items, and foods that are nearby, including treasure chests. However, something was wrong with the treasure chest detector. Players noticed that it would oftentimes go off without any treasure chest nearby. Sometimes this was a bug. For example, on the Great Plateau in the Woodcutter's House, a treasure chest containing the warm doublet, <coughs> doublet, will spawn after you complete the Great Plateau. However, if you already obtained the Warm Doublet by scaling Mount Helia or cooking a meal for the old man, then the chest won't spawn there since you already got the Warm Doublet by doing those tasks. Despite this, the Sheikah sensor will go off in this house since the game believes a chest should be there even though there isn't a chest there. Similarly, the treasure chest in the Luralin gambling shop will make the sensor go off, even though it's impossible to open the chest permanently, since, well, it's a shop that's gotta keep running. This means that the sensor will always go off in this location. But these aren't the worst type of treasure chests. Some are far more nefarious. Take, for example, this unsuspecting chest in Hitana Village. Oh, what's that? You say you, you, say you can't see it. Oh, well, I don't blame you, because this chest is in the stinking ground! Ugh. Somehow, during development, Nintendo made an oopsie and left several chests just like this one stuck under Hyrule in places that are inaccessible to the player. In fact, one of these chests is so devious it can be seen from the surface, but is locked into the sand, meaning it cannot be pulled up. As you can understand, this infuriated players, especially completionists who couldn't stand the thought of an unreachable chest. It's not even like these chests had good rewards in them. They were pretty mediocre. But gosh darn it, if these chests exist, then they're gonna be opened! So, one month and three days after the game's release, a Zelda Reddit user named Helian Angel made a post listing every single impossible chest in the game. This began the four-year-long quest to catch them all. Certain chests were knocked off the list right away, namely the chest on the Great Plateau, which is easily possible to open as long as you don't talk to the old man, and the chest at the gambling shop, which can be opened, but just can't be permanently opened. That still left five chests. A mere month after the quest started, a major breakthrough was made by the Japanese Breath of the Wild YouTuber Drill Karamari, who discovered that by banging the stuck chest at Eris Beach with a second chest, it could be dislodged. The process is 100% luck-based and requires hours worth of attempts, but it was possible. However, the other chests would not be so forgiving. Whereas this chest was visible from the surface, the others were buried deep underground, with no way of being accessed. Things stayed this way until 2018, when a Chinese Breath of the Wild player discovered a trick called Ollie Clipping, a glitch which enables the player to clip through the ground. This opened the floodgates, and getting the last four chests now seemed possible. Then, on May 19th, 2020, a Twitter user named 1203Bear underscore Switch brought the total down to three. Using an Ollie Clip, a Moon Jump, the Travel Medallion, and Menu Overloading, they found a way to redirect this falling chest underneath Rasala Lake to get it into the range of the Magnesis Rune. It's by far the most complicated glitch setup I've ever seen and could take days to get right, but it was done. Strangely, following this success, no one bothered to find the last three chests. Maybe the glitches were too scary, or nobody remembered the other three. Some modders, led by my man CEO Brains, tried to fix this with their mod project, Second Wind, by making the chests accessible. It worked, however, people still wanted to see it done without modifications. It wasn't until 2021 that somebody picked up the torch and became the next treasure hunter, El Duende 05. Inspired by GameFAQ's post made by Helian Angel and Master of Majora, as well as his completionist impulses, El Duende was determined to reach these impossible chests. Within a single afternoon, he found a strategy for getting the chests at Upland Zorano and Hetano Village. With an ollie jump, some ice, and a little bit of teleportation, both of them turned out to be very possible to reach, meaning there was only one chest left. Only a short hike away from the frustrating stuck chest is another one, one which spawns deep underneath this part of the beach. Seems simple enough, right? Just ollie clip through the ground. WRONG! Due to render distances and the possible locations where you can place ice blocks underground, it's not possible to load this chest in through normal means. We asked Wende if there was anything that could be done to reach this impossible chest. They responded, It's not looking good with our current knowledge of the game. The only thing I could think of is using an amiibo to spawn a wooden box under it to float it up out of the water. As of this moment, chest number five is still in limbo. No one has reached it, and it's unknown if anyone will. Duende has uploaded a comprehensive guide to these impossible chests if you'd like to learn more about them. A link will be in the description below. And hey, maybe you could be the next person to find the last impossible chest. If you want to know more about the hottest and coldest places in Breath of the Wild, click here. And if you want to learn about a cut Sheikah rune that everybody forgot about, click here. 
until I see you next time. Have fun, Storm of the Castle.